Welcome to Channel We Make, your insight to the Australian visa system. Good day, everyone. My name is Carl Yang, your online YouTube visa consultant. Are you interested about my great to Australia? Why don't you consider to subscribe to my channel and turn on a little bell on the sides so once we have all the updates and news, you'll be the first one getting all the insight. Now today's video is all about partner visa. No, not just partner visa, but if you do have a spouse or partner, perhaps, not just on the visa side, you may be a subsequent entrant for your wife or you know your husband or your de facto partner to be with you on a 4A2 visa, working visa, or types of different visa, as long as you're looking to actually prove an evidence of support for the relationship. And in the specific topic on long distance relationship. Now, how many of you have long distance relationship? Now, obviously, over the past two or three years, or due to COVID-19, there has been a lot of lockdown between borders and borders and borders. And they are, in fact, a lot of people has been maintaining relationship in a long distance, so-called. Anyway, uh, not, not just during the pandemic, but in the normal circumstances, uh, there are a lot of people due to their employment, for example, and also kids starting somewhere else, and the wives taking kids to interstate, different area, relocate. However, the husband continue to stay and work, or vice versa, all types of different family situation and causing the long distance relationship. So we're going to discuss about how uh, evidence of proof can be provided in order for this type of situation. And I believe this will be coming more common and common as we moving towards a digitalized uh, you know, new age and where we can actually connect, interconnect well, via like YouTube, um, video conferencing, Google Meet, Zoom, Microsoft Teams. So their relationships can still maintain. It doesn't have to be physically, obviously. If, if you are physically and mutually uh, residing at the same address, that's pretty easy to prove. And that was all the previous uh, precedents we have talked about. But what about now in the future? There has been a lot of people, they have relationships, but they are not physically living together, either due to kids' education or due to employment purposes or elsewhere, or perhaps pandemic during the last two or three years. Let's have a look on that one today, and this is the topic that we wanted to talk about right in this video. So uh, we're talking about uh, well, why am I still showing part of visa? Because well, it's it's easier to referring to. Um, but look, this situation or circumstances does not just apply to partner visa, as I uh, said at the beginning of this video. Uh, it could be on a uh, 4A2 TSS visa, whilst um, the, uh, the the primary applicant has already got the visa and already working in Australia. And the secondary, the spouse, due to the commitment of the, his or her employment elsewhere in different countries, he or she may join the TSS visa later on, perhaps six months or one year later. And during that time, obviously, that is where the existence of the long distance relationships start, right? It's pretty easy to actually comprehend. And nowadays, well, if we talk about this kind of topic, 10 years ago, perhaps, it will, it will be quite bizarre where the case officer will come and say, whoa, 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 so how do you maintain relationship uh, whilst uh, your spouse is elsewhere and, and you're in Australia or, or what, whichever the way it is. But look, it's 2022. Uh, it's actually becoming more and more common as we have looking towards. Obviously, if, if you and your spouse are together united in one physical residential address. Obviously, that's the best solution, but due to a lot of commitments, a lot of people won't be in that kind of situation. So I have personally go on this type of situation many, many times. I'm gonna show you one of the requests 
letter that I received from immigration itself. So it's better for me to actually explain in this way. So uh, now you may have seen this before or if not, you haven't even lodged a visa previously. This is a very generic request checklist that immigration officer was sent to you during the processing time. So first page, you will just say request checklist and detail and just two lines of word. I mean, this is pretty wasteful on the page. But I think the reason they do that is that they want you to actually pay attention what they are trying to say to you with just only a few words in one page. <clears throat> okay, so the majority of contents go on here. So for privacy pur uh, purposes, I have removed the name, the client ID, application ID. So they are looking for what? Obviously, these couples, uh, they are in a long distance relationship at this point in time. They are lodging a partner visa in this uh, scenario. As you can see, evidence of support of Australian citizen, your sponsor has required Australian citizenship during the process application. So this is a partner visa application. Now, the meat here that we are looking here is the first two items. The first one is evidence of you and your sponsor maintain contact from 2020 until now. Why are they asking this? Because obviously it's a long distance relationships. If you haven't been contacting each other, how can you prove that there is a relationship between you and your spouse during those those uh, period of time? And there's a second one is also vital, a joint financial evidence. Now, I'm gonna talk through on that one as well. Let's look at the detail. So request detail, first of all, um, provide evidence of applicant and the sponsor have maintained contact from 2020 until now for so here we go this is the key this is the thing that you should be prepared for if you are in a long distance relationship so for example letters well look <laughs> no one really write letters with envelopes nowadays so perhaps a more of um, uh, a common um, common sense uh, things and see the content. They want to see your content while you're in right to them. Okay, then the more practical way is more um, perhaps email uh, or perhaps apps. We chat on the apps all the time. So they were a telephone bill. Now look, no one's gonna spend thousands of dollars calling each other internationally nowadays. We all use, you know, IP related IP card. This is not even, you know, there's no IP card listings anymore. You know, back in the old days, you buy a little telephone car, scratch it over with the, whatever the password that is, or pass numbers, uh, and then pass code, and then you dial the numbers so of the call rate is actually cheaper. So no one actually do this anymore. So I, I don't understand why they still put that there. Perhaps some countries still using this, but no, not what I ever know of. Okay copies of emails and data transmission, online chatting and text messages. Now this makes more sense. So obviously uh, they are softwares online that you can download. Um, don't know if you need to pay for it or not. They can actually assist you to extract all your text messages or your apps messages or any type of transmission. If it's gonna be email, but look, no one's gonna email back and forth 100 times a night, right? So you, you you probably use app, you chat online, you can use video call, um, FaceTime, all type of whatever it is. So these kind of stuff required to be uh, recorded. And then actually, uh, when, what I did for this client was, uh, we got it all, uh, put it into PDF files, images, uh, and send it over. So images of your screenshot of your mobile phone. So sometimes when you chat, it's it's quite important that you uh, screenshot um, and especially if there's a relationship, or obviously, for example, if you got kids, right, you want to see your kids with the, uh, you know, video conferencing and you, you probably will do some screenshot and maintain relationship that way. So uh, these are all types of things that can be done. Now, if you come to me and say, look, Carl, I, 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 we, me and my spouse, we really don't do this. Well, then, then the question is, so how do you maintain relationship then? How do you maintain your contacts between you and your spouse? And then that will raise the question there. So it's pretty simple. 
it's just a matter of recording stuff as well. Now, unfortunately, the uh, the Department of Immigration ha has not had any mechanism to actually accept uh, video format of files. Now, until that day, but that that requires legislation changes. But until that day, uh, things may get easier and easier. But anyway, okay. Now, second thing. Now the. Provide evidence of the joint financial agreement entered by the applicant and sponsor by any financial support applicant or the sponsor provided to each other uh, during the course of relationship or marriage. For example, joint bank account, joint investments, loan, fund, tran transaction, evidences. So how do we provide this kind of evidence? So for example, even if it's going to be long distance relationship that you probably don't stay at the same residential address uh, for long term. but you know, they, there's holidays, right? So you you do want to see each other. Um, do you guys book tickets and go to some holiday destination together? Photographs, okay, go into a theme park together, going uh, booking into uh, itinerary, you know, and you you pay for the itinerary, you pay for the air ticket, you pay for the accommodations, or perhaps there's gifts sending in help between the family right so you may you may um you may post some gifts christmas is coming up you may buy some gift and post it over you can do it online there's a lot of gift shops uh, online nowadays uh and has there been any transfer of monies between each other so you're supporting him or he or she supporting you things like this can actually evidence of that kind of support uh, other than that for example you may um, you or your uh, spouse may ask oh I want to buy a car but I don't I'm lack of 10 grand can you you know transfer it over so you probably you would do some money transfer during that time so all these kind of things has actually show things between uh, you and your spouse even if it's gonna be a long distance relationship but these evidence of support will suffice the requirement so <laughs> it's not a common uh, practice that people actually receive these kind of things but I believe in the coming future or perhaps now there has been a lot of people in a long term long distance relationship there now last but not least people may ask now how long does this long-term relationship need to require to be existed in order for me to actually lodge a visa now simple for a partner visa or any type of evidence of support for relationship between you and your spouse uh, it has to be at least 12 months meaning that those evidence of support we just saw right from this one and to this one you need to prove with the date on it at least to be 12 months long in order to actually meet that requirement anyway should you have more question query more than welcome to leave comment right down below yeah, see you next video Goodbye.